Scarlet and Violet are the latest installment in the Pokemon video game franchise. Releasing very soon, here are 12 things you need to know before embarking on your new adventure in the 9th generation title. But before we get into today's video, please subscribe to the channel. Remember you can always unsubscribe later. Unlike previous Pokemon games where gameplay has been very linear, Scarlet and Violet now offer trainers a full open world experience. Unlike Pokemon Legends Arceus which had an open world feel to it, Scarlet and Violet will be totally open world in one map where no loading screens exist meaning you will have complete freedom to roam the Paldea region shortly after starting the games. There will also be three separate story modes that you will embark on through your journey in Scarlet and Violet and like the open world concept, these three stories are something you can choose to engage with at any point in your journey. There is the Victory Road quest. This is like your traditional gym quest where you will take on the gym leaders of the Paldea region in hope of becoming the champion. Gym leaders are said that you can take them on in any order but be aware there is no level scaling in these games so taking your level 5 starter Pokemon to one of the higher level gyms might not always be the best way to start your journey. The Path of Legends is the next quest, all about tackling the Titan Pokemon of the Paldea region and discovering the mysteries behind the rare item Herba Mystica. Starfall Street is the final quest which is your journey on taking down the new bad guy team in Scarlet and Violet, Team Star. These quests can be taken on in any order which gives you a huge amount of freedom and diversity to how you as an individual can approach playing these games. Like every Pokemon title, Scarlet and Violet are no different in offering up three new starter Pokemon. As you embark on your adventure through the Paldea region, you will be given the choice of one of these three new starter Pokemon. Sprigatito is the grass cat looking Pokemon, Fiococo is the fire crocodile kind of looking Pokemon and Quaxly the water duck Pokemon. As your starter will accompany you throughout the entire game, it's a good thing to think about prior to starting your playthrough and which one you want to join you throughout the Paldea region. Another difference from previous Pokemon games is Scarlet and Violet will allow you to get one of the legendary Pokemon right at the beginning of the game. If you have Pokemon Scarlet, you will get access to Coriodon, and if you get Pokemon Violet, you will get access to Mariodon. These legendary Pokemon though don't appear to be Pokemon you can battle with, but they do seem to be your ride on Pokemon to help you get around the Paldea region. Yep, no more bikes or HM slaves are needed to get around you the tricky terrains of this region as these legendaries can run, fly, swim and scale any obstacles that stand before you in this open world experience. Scarlet and Violet also offer co-op play. For the first time you will be able to join friends online to play through the game and adventure the new region. We don't have full details on the extent of what you will be able to do in this multiplayer mode, but the idea of being able to play with your friends online while you battle gyms, defeat Team Star or fight off Titan Pokemon is pretty exciting. In Sword and Shield we had Dynamax Pokemon, while well, staying true to the recent generations, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet have a brand new battle mechanic as well and it's called Terrestrialization. Each Pokemon will have its own Terra type and through this new mechanic you will be able to change the Pokemon's type in battle depending on what this Terra type is. Each Pokemon is said they can have one of 18 different Terra types meaning the possibilities for building teams and creating your own unique Pokemon is endless. And talking about terrestrialization, another new feature in these games is the Terror Raids, where you can team up with three other NPC characters or friends online to take on a Terror Boss. Essentially, these will be stronger Pokemon who are said to have rarer Terror types. Terror Raids aren't turn based like Dynamax Raids in Sword and Shield, so working as a team alongside your other trainers is key to overcoming these strong Terror Bosses. And like in Pokemon Sword and Shield and Legends Arceus, Pokemon will now spawn in the overworld as you are just walking around or adventuring through the Paldea region. 
You can also use the new Let's Go command to have your party Pokemon auto battle wild Pokemon to save engaging in a battle every time you come across a new Pokemon. And this helps with collecting items and also gaining easier experience points. And you shiny hunters will be happy as it's also been confirmed that shiny Pokemon will now be seen in the overworld as well. So unlike previous games like Sword and Shield where you had to encounter a Pokemon, go into the battle to see if it was shiny or not, in Scarlet and Violet, just like Pokemon Legends Arceus, you'll be able to see these shiny rare Pokemon just wandering around the Paldea region, if you're lucky enough, of course. Trainer battles in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet will no longer be mandatory. You will now have the choice to engage in trainer battles whenever you want. This is a really nice feature to allow players just to get on with actually playing the games and not have unwanted interruptions like in previous generations. TMs or technical machines will be making a return in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and they do look like they have a one use only. TMs will now also be a crafted item from a combination of what looks like league points you collect from beating trainers and wild Pokemon as well as items picked up from defeating Pokemon in the wild. Not much is known about the crafting side of the game yet but hopefully these are easy commodities to acquire and not something that takes too much grinding away from the actual story mods. Picnics are also a new feature within Scarlet and Violet where you will be able to make sandwiches for your own Pokemon as well as play games and interact with your party. It's also been shown that this new feature is also a way for you to obtain Pokemon eggs. How this works is still unknown but it's a new fun feature which could potentially see away with the daycare centers of the past. It does raise questions though if this is the case, how breeding mechanics would work especially with a party of 6 Pokemon. It's worth mentioning that picnics can also be played in co-op mode where up to 3 friends can join you to your picnic together which adds even more depth to this new feature. And of course we can't forget about the version exclusives. Like all past Pokemon games, there will be slight differences between the Pokemon that can be obtained in each different version of the game. I've done a whole video on this so if you'd like to know what differences and version exclusives there are in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, click this video right here and you'll be able to get all of that information right now. Scarlet and Violet are really looking like they're going to be one of the best games in the Pokemon franchise. Let me know down below what you are looking forward to most about playing these new titles. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.